Hello to everybody. Um, uh, not too sure where to start or where to go and, and, and what's uh, been said before, but um, in terms of something asked to talk about uh, water, I thought, well, you know, well, water actually is, moderates everything in life. It facilitates and allows it to happen, and probably the whole of the universe, what we know of, is all moderated by water, and I've got 20 minutes to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I thought, well, where am I going to go? So I thought, well, what I could do is, um, I think, a, a little bit of understanding of the nature of water. Water is a really strange and interesting uh, molecule, whatever you want to call it, and it's very has a lot of unique properties. And because of those unique properties, it does what it does. And if you can understand why it's unique and why it does this, then I think we might better a little have a little better relationship and understanding of of. Uh, the nature of water and therefore how we should relate to it and what's going on. And it's really interesting, we have this word called water, and everything's, everybody uses the same word, water. In English, we only seem to have one word for water. It's ridiculous, really. I mean, water is so much, uh, uh, comes from the place it's in and the nature of that place that it's always different. And it's a little bit of that I want to talk about, why it's different. So there's going to be a little bit of a couple of technical slides. Don't get too worried. It's so a little bit of basic chemistry or physics, though. But I think it's really important to understand this in terms of the nature of water, and that's what I uh, want to go through. Um, and, and, and interesting, just as an aside, too, um, in terms of the phycota um, we're having just now and that sort of thing, is, is that in, in Maori, of course, there's in numbers of different ways they talk about water. They have words that mean types of water. They have a lot of their rivers. Um, it, it explains the nature of that particular water. So the why and then something rather about the type of water it is, it's in Waikato or why, why, um, whatever it is might be, you know, and then whether it's Waiwater or Waimati or whatever it is, it's, the, it, water is always has some sort of qualification in terms of the, the nature of that water. And so, but we don't do that very well, I don't think, in English. So anyway, let's get going. I just want to start with an overview first in terms of nature of water. We're basically a primate organism on this, on this planet. And we're on the land and we're on the surface of the land and we actually really uh, need to relate to and need uh, the, the raining waters on the surface of the land. Even though our modern technology might have dug a few holes in it and probably not, it's not a good thing, but um, it's the surface water we, we're actually on about. Now, we all know that we're, we're water is as life. That's the Gaia hypothesis, Lovelock's Gaia hypothesis. And we're on a watery planet. <clears throat> but um, if you look at the water on the planet, it's mostly it's the seawater. And um, actually what's in your body is actually, in the cells of the body is seawater as well, but we won't count that. Um, it's, uh, and so the fresh water is a very really small proportion of that. And of the fresh water, a lot of it's in ice in Antarctica, or in Arctic, well, not so much in the Arctic any longer, but there used to be some there. Um, and, and then of that um, liquid fresh water, most of it's in the ground, which is where it needs to be in the, in the land and sort of flowing the nutrients through in the ground and that sort of thing, but most of it's in the ground. Of the liquid surface fresh water, most of it's in lakes and that, very few in rivers. So, what is it, 0.005% of water is flowing in rivers. Um, but that's what's really vital to our lives as creatures on this planet. So, you know, it's, uh, it might be a lot of water in the world, but there's some water that we really need to be take care of and relate to. Now, Aotearoa New Zealand is actually an interesting position in the globe. That's half the world you're looking at there. And there's mostly water, mostly the Pacific Ocean. And we're this country down in the, in the South Pacific, um, sort of isolated from everybody else um, and, and, and surrounded by water. So we're really, um, the whole character of New Zealand and the, and the way it, it responds is based around water, both through the air and, and, and around the seas and that. And, and that. So we're a very watery country. So I like this one. This is a, 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 a mate of mine who did a painting. It was actually for war murals, actually, in Foxton, if you know where that is, in New Zealand. And he painted this one, and it was based on a NASA um, um, thing of the globe. And, the thing, and they got the Godwood. And, and, the, and E7 was the first Godwood which was, was tagged to go right from New Zealand to, to the USA and to Alaska and back again. Um, and, and it just em emphasises to me the connectedness uh, of the world we live in. And uh, I, I think, you know, it's just a good example to remember that. that and the thing that connects us mostly is water, and whether it's 
in the air or on the sea or in our bodies or in the ground. It's basically what it's um, connecting us. So I do want to talk about this a little bit. This is the sort of like, it seems to me that uh, what started life in New Zealand was a synergy between what we call carbon, and it's only a name, and water. And I just want to go uh, over that a little bit in terms of how life revolves around. And this is a little bit of uh, physics or chemistry that's coming up. So. So this is a periodic table for all those people who can remember any chemistry at school. But it's, it's drawn in the way it should be drawn. It's drawn as a spiral. Um, and it starts off with hydrogen in the middle, and that's the basic element. And it spirals out and, 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 and uh, where clouds of energy um, um, form around the, our central nucleus. And it, it, it's all to do with what's going on with these things. I think I've got one more in there, yeah, in terms of... So hydrogen, hydrogen's a bit schizophrenic, really. It doesn't really know whether it's quite arthur or math or whether it's a giver or a taker because it's got this one cloud of energy and it really like two to make itself satisfied and whole and that sort of thing, like helium, which sort of wanders around and looks after itself and doesn't care about anything, really, um, because he's quite satisfied just doing his own thing. But um, hydrogen doesn't know whether it wants to be helium or wants to be connected with somebody else. Um, and so it's maybe a given, maybe a take, and that's where the whole question of water is going to come in because it's all about the give and take there. Oxygen is just the name we give it again. It's that first cloud of energy where it's got two arms, um, basically two things that I'd like. I'd like something to fill me up. You know? And the thing about carbon is it's right in the middle, so it's got lots of give and take. It's got the most connections. It can make all these chains and rings and connect on all sorts of other um, elements and that on it. So carbon is just the name we give to that basic element that can make lots and lots of connections. Um, and that's why it's basis of life. It's a matter of interest. If you go to the next one up, the next circle up, it's silicon. Also has that facility, and that's why the physical world is based around silicon, really. Um, so let's just step forward. So this is the molecule of a very dichromatic molecule of water. So we have oxygen in there sort of wanting to have a little dance with hydrogen, and there's a dance. It's a dance of energy exchange. They're constantly giving it to each other, and they say, well, I give to you and you give to me, and if you do it fast enough, we both think we've got it, you know? <laughs> and, and so we'll both be satisfied. <laughs> but, um, so you've got to do a real fast dance, and then you're all right. And, and so hydrogen says, yeah, OK, I'll join in your dance, and I'll, I'll share my, my energy with you, and if we can give it backwards and forwards. And that forms this H2O, it's hydrogen oxide, it's just this thing we call water. But as I say, hydrogen's a bit sort of wondering, well, hell's teeth, I gave you my cloud of energy, but I'm, really, I'm nowhere near, so to give me my two. So how about I just sort of come in behind somebody and say, well, you share with me just a little bit, eh? We won't make it a full deal, you know? Not the full bond, not the full chemical bond, but it's like, we'll do something on the sly, shall we? Just around the corner. <laughs> and we'll form a little bit of a sharing backwards and forwards, you know? And, um, and then I might be a bit more satisfied, you know, I can keep a little bit on the side, we might be quite good, you know. So that's sort of what, what hydrogen does, and because of that, it, it's what is called a weak bond. Now, everything about water, what happens with water, is do this weak bond. And so we've got this, these um, molecules of hydrogen oxide, um, and they are basically forming weak bonds. And that enables to do all these things we call the anomalies of water. Things like being a universal solvent. What does a solvent mean? It means something disappears in it. You put something in water and it's just gone. Where'd it go? How come it just disappeared on you? you know? And it's because these weak gongs, uh, bonds can form um, clusters or rings or whatever you like to call it, shapes around the molecules. It's so able to shape every single type of molecule. Um, and it can basically, with these weak bonds, form these rings or shapes around it. And that's what dissolving means. It means it's gone completely surrounded by water molecules which knows its shape, right? And so basically that's what dissolving means. And so water has this incredible ability to take up and, and circle because of all these weak bonds um, and all they make all these shapes, okay? And that's really important if water's going to transport nutrients and uh, do the facilitating of all these things that take place in the, in the world and life. The other interesting thing about water is that... Um, you might know that ice is actually less dense than water, and that's a really strange thing, that the solid is less dense than the liquid. And it's the only um, element that's anything like that. And that's, again, because of these weak bonds and the way that they form when, the, when it starts to cool down and becomes a solid, and won't go into the detail of that. But it's absolutely important in terms of the way the water cycle works and in terms of the, 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 the effect of glaciers and ice and that in terms of nutrient flow. 
Um, and then it's a heat moderator. I mean, the, the greenhouse gas that's the most important one is water. Water is what moderates the climate, is what takes the heat from the tropics to the poles all the time. It's all about water. Water is the big greenhouse gas. And so what's happening to water has a huge effect on our, on our climate. And it's because, again, these weak bonds that say, look, no, 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 I'm, I'm quite tied together here. You've got to take a lot of, of energy to make me sort of move up in temperature or make evaporation into, into uh, gas. Um, and that allows it to be a huge transporter of heat and to circulate it in the, around the globe. But those are just some of the main anomalies of water that's really important um, for what I want to talk about. But I better keep going if I'm looking at the monitor. Um, so everyone knows about the water cycle, and, then, and, then that, and that's just a diagram to show the importance of the water cycle and how it flows through everything in, in life, really. I put up this one. This is a, something I drew for a, um, a conference in Fokutani, and um, and it's really based on a person, I've known one or two people here know about Victor Schauberger. You should all, after this session, if you don't know him, Google Victor Schauberger. Um, he's got an extraordinary um, ideas and a different way of looking at water and nature and how it all works together. Um, and one of the things I really like about him, he says, is both explosive um, processes and implosive processes. And there's a dance that goes on between expansion and contraction and, and that sort of thing. And, and that water is at the heart of the stance of, of, um, of growth and then maturity. And, and when one of those sort of aspects get out of um, phase or, or too much, then that's when we have problems. So if we have too much expansion, that's a problem. If we have too much contraction, that's a problem. But there's a stance of life and death that goes on uh, mediated by, by water. And you um, and don't have to look at what's in that picture, but it was just trying to um, make that point, which um, thank you, Victor Schauberger. Um, so in terms of regeneration of water, then, if we come to we all know the problems that, that the water uh, is suffering from in terms of what we've been doing with Anthropocene or whatever we want to call it. Um, so the water cycle is absolutely um, basic to the regeneration of water. It's, it's how water um, basically frees itself again, uh, goes up in the air, comes back down, and then can and then reabsorb information. Because the thing about those weak bonds and that clustering is that they are information packages. And so water has this ability to have, um, to have information and to transfer information. So one of the things that, that is about the form of water is, is the vortex. Is it vortex, and then the, you spin a vortex around, you get a torus. And that's the basic form of, of this expansion and contraction. And forming vortices is one of the ways that water works, and one of the ways it regenerates itself is through vortex formation. Um, and when the flow um, has a lot of vortice in it, and then the, the, the thing is doing itself really well and it will do its job for life, so to speak. So vortex formation, and the vortex is a double helix, the no, the internal one, the contraction one. So it's no wonder our DNA has got a double helix. I mean, that's everything. It's just that it's, it's a vortex form of water. Um, so forming vortices, the other thing that's really important is, is, is like a step function. There's a lot of things in, in life that go through steps. And it's that sort of uh, flow, chaos, flow, chaos um, is really important. And streams naturally do that step function, and that, that's where they revitalise water. And it's one of the reasons why, if you want to get really good water as a primate, you go and drink the brook water, where it's got a nice step function, bubbling brook going uh, to function to it. So we need more of that. <coughs> and then the other thing is, in terms of the groundwater, and what's happening to our groundwaters and that, and. Uh, and what's going to happen on the surface is a really important part of what happens in, in the groundwater. And um, without spending too much time on that, um, the surface cover, whether it's trees or whether it's good soil or not, makes a huge difference to what's happened in the ground. And again, thank you to Victor Schauberger as to how the whole thing works. And it's a lot of it's to do with temperature, which nobody else seems to come to. So in my little bit of time i got left, um, I want to sort of concentrate more on, on, a, on a focus on food as an example. So this is uh, from my same friend Duncan Hill, the other painting, he, he does this actually for my book. And uh, we've climbed out of the ecosystem really and we've gone into this hierarchical pyramidal sort of thing and that's the nature of all our cultures, whether it's agriculture, food or whatever, we have this hierarchical um, structure, dominance control structure on it. So um, you all know about this. I mean, this is, this is the, uh, like irrigated um, circles of monocultures uh, it, it's some craziest way you could ever do agriculture. And it, it's the impact on water that people overlook. They, a lot of people are concerned about their food, right? Well, your food is basically mostly water itself, so you're mostly water. 
And when you take that food in, the message you get from that food is all moderated by water. And it's the nature of the water that you drink and the water that's in your food and the water that's in your body that's going to make you either healthy or unhealthy. Um, and so, so what the, this does to water is, is a thing that I'd try, like to get across. It's the same whether we're talking about plantations and these are that terrible palm oil stuff and, and that. And, it, and it's just the, the monoculture of it is the issue. Anyway, we don't go on that slide. <laughs> so just what this one is, is this a diagram? Don't look at the detail of the diagram. But what it's all about is the synergies that go on between different, different parts of an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a very diverse, complex arrangement that is, has all sorts of feedback loops and, and ways of um, maintaining its resilience and productivity. And it's, I don't know if you noticed those words earlier on, it, it, the important thing to me in anything about food or water is the combination of both productivity and resilience. And that's to do with those expanding and contraction and whether in an implosive way or an explosive way. Um, but it is all about these relationships. And what's really important is are the relationships. Um, and so it's the relationships of the ecosystem and the way they're all moderated through water uh, that I think is the message that I want to get across. Um, there's this really interesting um, synergy that goes on between plants and soil life. Uh, and ever since um, the life has been on the land, which of course it wasn't initially, it was in the sea, but since then there's just been an incredible um, uh, relationship synergy between the microbes and the soil and the plants, how they feed each other and, and how they get the nutrients through each other, through the sap and through the water. But it's in this. And then the animals, how the animals complexify that system and make it more curative and make it more diverse and make it more productive and more resilient. Um, and then that, and, and, and whether it's the insects or the bigger animals or whatever. Um, and, and all the way through, this is making it a much more um, complex and, and therefore more biomass and therefore more product, productive, but also more resilient. And, and the, all those parts of that system are important. Um, and, and they all need to work together. So um, this is our place. <laughs> First picture there is 87, and the second picture is 10 years, uh, 20 years later, sorry. One of the main things in terms of regenerating the landscape is regenerating the, these processes of interaction and water flow and that. And so um, we use um, the different methods, whether it's planting trees or whether it's um, the way you graze stock to regenerate soil. It, it's, it's all to do with um, increasing the complexity, increasing the, the uh, exchanges that go, go, go across. Fertility is just the rate of exchange. The higher the rate of exchange, the more fertile it is, the more productive it is. And so basically, we, we, when we came there, it was a pretty run down piece of land. It was a sort of runoff in New Zealand language where the cattle went in the winter. And so um, we've had to try and do quite a lot to regenerate. And uh, well, no, sorry. We've had to do quite a lot to allow nature to regenerate it. <laughs> um. Um, I just want to touch on this. Um, I don't know if Kay Baxter was going to say something about this as well, but. One of the diversities we've lost in, in, the, in, the, in the sort of simplification of our, of our systems is the diversity of the seeds and the plants that we actually use, whether it's um, potatoes or beans or whatever it is. Um, and I always remember the thing I was told about in terms of the, the, the corn and the maize, that whenever they selected the maize, they always took 24 different types of maize and planted them. And that was every year they planted 24 different types of maize. Um, and it would be different 24 depending on what they collected and what was appropriate to the site and what the weather had done that year or whatever it was. And, and we've got uh, 11 hybrids in the whole of the industrialised corn fields. All right. um, so I, uh, nature <laughs> does love diversity for a very good reason. Um, and I, I, I have to put in one of the three sisters because it's, it's my uh, favourite way of providing the macronutrients to the, um, the starch, as you might say, because um, the corn does do that, but it does it with the beans and it does it with the squash. So you get, they all love to work to work together, they all support each other, and they form a full diet. So they're good for our microbes and our intestines, as they are good for the microbes in the soil, and they all work together. And so um, we've tried things like rice and wasn't quite in the right climate, but I've done wheat and I've done oats, and I, I, I could do that, but actually, this is a much better system. Uh, and it does mimic a, a certain extent. It's simplified, obviously, but it does. I have to put this one in here in terms of, um, I said about how water is a great um, sort of heat transferer. Um, 
And so uh, it's really the water cycle that I was, uh, tend to harp on about when it comes to whether it's climate change, whatever it is, because it's a lot more than just climate change. It's what's happening to our rivers, it's what's happening to our land, it's what's happening to our ecosystems, and how they're all related together, and how water relates them all together um, in, in different ways. Um, and this is just a NASA sort of um, generated sort of image of, of, of the globe, but it, I think it makes the point that, that uh, how it is all related together. And I have put trees down there, trees, trees, trees. I'm known for that guy who says, what are you going to do next? Just plant a tree, just plant another tree, just plant another tree. But um, they are the best relators of, uh, uh, between the soil and the air and, and uh, the best sort of ways of, of getting the water to move. And, and, um, and if you want a carbon sink, well, they are the greatest way of doing it. And not to say that soils and grasslands don't, I mean, ecologies are different. In different places have different ecologies and therefore you have to take a different approach. There is no one approach. In fact, there's massively different approaches. And one thing that I sort of really don't like to talk about is that what is, what is the way of doing something? And there's always a way of doing something among many, many ways of doing something. And we all need to learn our own way of doing something in our own place. And I think that's about it, except that, I've, again, it, it, this is a, 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 a painting they did for my book, Dear Old Duncan. And um, I've superimposed that, the Taurus um, image, um, because I think, um, I think we are in a time of, of, of transformation. Nature has many ways of doing things, and it has two sort of ways of, and those sort of step transitions I talk, talked about, this progressive changes and transformational changes, and nature uses both of them all the time. They're always present in all sorts of ways, and one tends to go to the other and back again. Um, and you can do things through progressive ways, either good things and bad things, um, generative and degenerative. And you can also do things in transformative ways. And it just seems to me that, that, and this is just my opinion, that we're in a particular phase where it has to be transformational, that it will be, regardless of any choices we make, it will be. It's just what type of transformation it's going to be. That's what our choice is about. It's not about whether it'll be a transformation. And so um, I suppose I have to say that the heart of that, the heart is about the blood flow. It's about our water flow. You know, the heart of that. Um, is uh, it has to be about water and, and water in the, in, the, in the world, blood in ourselves uh, and, and how they relate together. I mean, it might be interesting to know that we have, we've got, we've got more uh, nerve connections to our heart than we have to our brains. Our heart what's needs to know what's going on in every cell in our body, right? Uh, it's got the connections. It connects us. And it's our emotional centre because it's the connector. Emotion's about relationships. It's about um, connection. And that our brain is just a process that it sits up there and focuses a little bit and does all sorts of calculations, but that's really not so much of a big deal. But it's doing a lot of calculations because it's got masses of water. Most of our water is in our brains, and then it's moderating all those um, transactions that actually make us allow us to think. And that so. So it's all about to me. It's about transformation, and that's why I think um, we need to really look at. At, at all the water flows and all the uh, ways that it happens in the ecosystem. So I don't know if you can read that thing at the bottom there, but it, it's just that um, you know we make our own um, uh, limits, really. Uh, we make our own um, restrictions on ourselves. And so um, it's up to us to change that when we need to change it. And not to say that it always needs to be changed. We need to recognise and acknowledge what's come before us. Um, but we also are not limited by it. Um, if it needs to change, then we need to do something about it. So the only block is in our minds and, and maybe in our hearts as well. And we need to be both open, open-minded and, and, and full-hearted uh, and also good nutrition in our guts. So we've got the willpower to take action. And they all need to work together. And, uh, and I've got zero minutes, zero seconds left. <laughs>